Hey guys, Eber here with Hurricane X. And if you recall a few months back, Nvidia officially launched their MaxQ technology, which endeavored to offer desktop class gaming performance in an ultrabook size portable form factor. The resulting designs were a significant uh, step forward in the notebook sphere, but most importantly, it also gave us a little glimpse into what the future had in store for gamers. Now, Nvidia promised excellent gaming performance along with great battery life and acoustics, and I was really curious to test out some of these new Max-Q notebooks because I've been on a hunt to find a portable editing notebook ever since Computex, and this is just perfect timing because CES is just a month away, and I have these two notebooks to test out. On one hand, there's the ROG Zephyrus that features an i7-7700HQ CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1080 in its Max-Q design, a 512GB Samsung Samsung NVMe SSD, 15.6-inch uh, 1080p, 120Hz G-Sync IPS display. That's right, my friends, G-Sync at 120Hz, and it retails for $2,700. Yikes. But on the other hand, we have the Gigabyte Aero 15X, featuring the exact same specs except for the GPU. In this case, it comes with a 1070, uh, a Toshiba NVMe SSD, and a 1080p 60Hz IPS display. And this retails for $2,200, which is still an expensive notebook. Now think about it this way, these notebooks are designed and geared towards a specific type of audience, the one who cares about performance, portability, and efficiency in a compact form factor. Um, now, there's obviously the argument that you can build a much better gaming desktop PC for less than half the cost of these notebooks, but you know, ultimately it comes down to your preference. If you really want performance and, you know, efficiency in a compact form factor, there's going to be a premium price to pay for that. So let's take an in-depth look of the ROG Zephyrus and the Gigabyte Aero 15X right after a message from our sponsor. The new Master Liquid all-in-one coolers are available in 120 and 240 millimeter stylish radiator sizes with air balance fans included for best airflow and RGB sync on the pump and the fans that are controlled via this hub or through your motherboard. Check out the ML120L and 240L down below. All right, let's kick things off with the ROG Zephyrus because it's a unique notebook in every aspect when compared to the competition. The first noticeable difference is the design of this notebook. When you open it up, you'll notice that Asus had to make some structural sacrifices, namely embedding a desktop class GPU into a thin and light chassis. And as a result, uh, the entire keyboard had to move downwards. That means most of the mission critical components are closer to the screen along with cooling intakes. Now, ergonomically, the keyboard placement didn't really make any sense, especially when placed on my lap. It felt far too close to me and it was an uncomfortable typing experience. Moving the notebook further away isn't feasible either, since it would partially hang off my knees. Same story goes when you're working off a desk. Make sure you have ample amount of vertical space to push the notebook further away, but be mindful that could increase the viewing distance, which may or may not affect visibility of the screen. But generally speaking, this is just a non-design, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments. Quick mention on the keys, they deliver excellent tactile feedback. They don't require a lot of pressure to actuate and the keys are LED backlit, plus they have received the RGB treatment and customization can be done through software. The trackpad is surprisingly well thought out and it's amazing too. While the amount of lateral space is restrictive, the dedicated left and right buttons are so much better than integrated buttons found on other notebooks. The responsiveness is spot on. Again, this is thanks to the use of Windows precision drivers uh, and the trackpad's inherent resistance ensures its learning curve is gentle. Asus has also implemented a numpad within the trackpad uh, with the touch of this button in the upper left corner, the LEDs light up and it works great. The rest of the design language is pretty minimal. Asus didn't go too fancy with the aggressive red and black accents, although I do have to point out that the brushed aluminum material picks up grease and fingerprints easily, so do keep that in mind. The underside of the Zephyrus is pretty interesting as well. The entire bottom plate lifts itself slightly off the tabletop at an angle once the lid is opened. It's called the Active Aerodynamic System that allows the notebook to breathe a little bit better, which should also theoretically result in lower temperatures, because Asus has cramped a GTX 1080 inside this slim frame. The included screwdriver can be used to remove the bottom plate if you need to clean the fans, but Unfortunately, getting to the rest of the components is extremely difficult since uh, they're locked tightly in areas where you can't access them without that screwdriver. Now, the implementation of AAS is an excellent idea on paper, but I feel like it could also cause longevity issues. You see, the bottom plate flexes and it's quite flimsy as well. One wrong move could break the hinges, at least in theory, but I guess time will tell. The I.O. is respectable on this notebook. On the right hand side, there's Kensington lock, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C. 
slash Thunderbolt 3 connector. Switching over to the left, there's power in, HDMI 2.0, uh, two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 connectors, and a headphone slash mic jack. Now, if you need to get a DisplayPort output from the Zephyrus, you can use a Thunderbolt to DisplayPort adapter, which unfortunately doesn't come with a notebook, plus uh, you sacrifice on the only Type-C Thunderbolt port, so do keep that in mind. The lack of an SD card reader is a bummer, so is the exclusion of a LAN port, but ASUS does include a USB Type-A to RJ45 adapter out of the box. Okay, let's switch gears and discuss the Gigabyte Aero 15X. And right off the bat, this thing looks like a normal notebook, unlike the Zephyrus. It's a lot more compact and space efficient than Asus is offering, since Gigabyte has managed to fit a 15.6 inch matte display in a smaller footprint, and the end result, ultra thin bezels, along with maximizing the keyboard's horizontal space across the entire chassis. And visually, this thing is thin and lighter than the Zephyrus. It can pull double duty as a gaming station or a mobile creative power horse, which is kind of what I'm looking for in the first place. I also like the design of the Aero 15X. It's pretty simple without any gamery elements added to the body, and I appreciate that on a gaming notebook. Simple on the outside, beastly on the inside. The keyboard is fantastic to type with. Seriously, it's one of the best that I've come across on a notebook. They exhibit great tactile feedback, plus there's a good amount of travel distance, which almost makes it feel like typing on a hybrid mechanical keyboard, and I really enjoyed my time with it. But the trackpad is downright atrocious. Now, don't get me wrong, the surface is super smooth for navigation and the integrated buttons are functional, but it's the terrible ELAN drivers that come out of the box. Now, supposedly you could replace the existing ELAN drivers with Windows Precision drivers, and I'll leave a link to dave 2 video in the description down below where he walks you through the process of updating you know, existing ELAN or Synaptic drivers to Windows Precision. I followed the exact same procedure for the Aero 15X, and it was a day and night difference. Like, honestly, the ELAN drivers that come out of the box are absolutely horrible. Uh, again, this is where you know, hardware and software comes into play. If you have good hardware and a terrible software, it's just not gonna work well. But if you decide to uh, update that software and make it a little bit more efficient, uh, say, you know, taking advantage of those gesture controls with the Windows 10, it's just an awesome experience. Uh, but do be, be mindful though, this is completely at your own risk. Uh, I tried it on the Air 15X and it just works fine. So I'm just gonna you know, leave that as a disclaimer. The keyboard also features RGB lighting and it can be controlled through the Fusion software. There's a lack of lighting cohesion with some keys glowing much brighter than others, and the outwards glow is only visible at certain angles. Upgradability on the Aero 15X is somewhat easier than the Zephyrus, but it still voids your warranty. Plus, you'll need a Torx screwdriver to access the bottom, but if you'd like to add more storage to the unit, there's a spare M.2 slot that supports NVMe drives as well. Taking a look at the I.O., this notebook offers a lot more than the Zephyrus. So on the right-hand side, we had Kensington Lock, a pair of USB 3.1 Gen 1 connectors, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port, and a full-size SD card reader. Thank you, Gigabyte. Switching over to the left, there is a LAN jack, USB 3.1 Gen 1, HDMI 2.0, a mini display port 1.2 connector with native G-Sync support, and a combo headphone slash mic output. So there's a lot of I.O. on the Aero 15X that content creators and gamers can take advantage of, which is awesome. Now, I do want to spend some time and talk about the displays on both the Zephyrus and the Aero 15X. Both are equipped with 15.6 inch 1080p IPS screens, but from a gaming standpoint, the Zephyrus does have a distinctive advantage with its 120 Hz G-Sync display. More importantly, that notebook won't have any problem maintaining frame rates that take full advantage of the 100 Hz refresh rate. Gigabyte, on the other hand, seems to have geared this display to appeal to prosumers and gamers alike. It comes calibrated straight out of the box with Pantone certification and a number of presets revolving so users can uh, you know, pick and choose the optimal color space. Where it lacks is in the refresh rate department. At 60 Hz, it's definitely not gonna give users a smoother gameplay experience like the Zephyrus, but stunning rich colors make up for it. Color uniformity was very consistent throughout both panels. The Aero 15X does have a slightly richer color hues and a more robust color space, but when properly calibrated, the Zephyrus can display very similar outputs. However, both panels couldn't reach adequate brightness output in well-lit environments, so you may have a tough time viewing the displays outdoors. Given both screens are IPS, the color reproduction is fantastic with good contrast ratio. Gigabyte's enhanced color depth did look slightly better than the Zephyrus, but if you prefer a display with the highest refresh rate along with support for G-Sync, ASUS is the way to go. 
Okay, so I think it's about time to move on to the performance segment and compare both these notebooks. Kicking things off with synthetic benchmarks, the results show that the notebooks run neck to neck with only a few variations here and there. In some cases, certain slight changes in hardware or the reaction of the CPU, memory, GPU can contribute to the variations. Nonetheless, they aren't significant in the least. The drive speeds are just insane on both these notebooks, but Gigabyte takes the lead here. Their Toshiba NVMe SSD simply blows the doors off Samsung's offering within the Zephyrus. It isn't even close. As a matter of fact, this happens to be one of the fastest storage subsystems I've ever seen in a notebook. Running the GIMP benchmark, the Zephyrus shows a very small lead, which is likely due to the fact that Gigabyte's notebook has a ton of bloatware installed, whereas Asus device has a relatively, but not completely, clean Windows install. Handbrake and WinRAR involve some storage subsystem intervention, and as expected, the Aero 15X and its insanely fast Toshiba SSD leap to the forefront. Switching gears to some gaming performance, and this was pretty much a foregone conclusion. The GTX 1080 wins by about as much as it would on the desktop, I do want to point out though that the Aero 15X's benchmarks certainly aren't anything to sneeze at either. The first round of gaming benchmarks show that both systems are able to throw out some impressive frame rates despite being thin and light notebooks. We are talking about substantially more than 60 frames per second in every title, even at their highest detail setting. The second set of tests show much more of the same, but in even more impressive fashion since both the Aero 15X and Zephyrus easily post playable frame rates in Warhammer 2, one of the suite's most graphically intensive titles. Honestly, if you're playing at their native 1080p resolutions, either notebooks will be perfectly suitable for gaming. But what happens if you choose to output to a secondary monitor, say 1440p? Well, maintaining playable frame rates at this high resolution is certainly a challenge, but both competitors seem more than up for it. Now, with Warhammer 2, we see a minor slip for the GTX 1070 and the GTX 1080 Max-Q since it requires a copious amount of system resources to run even at lower resolutions. Other than that, Gigabyte and Asus continue to deliver great overall results. All right, let's move on to battery life. And what you're seeing here isn't anything wrong with the Zephyrus. It really is that bad. However, there's a lot going on underneath those numbers since the Zephyrus battery capacity is nearly half that of gigabytes and it doesn't actually have Optimus enabled. Supposedly, the extra trace routing and components necessary for that feature needed to be left off to save space. In my opinion, and based on the battery life, that was a bad decision since that GTX 1080 is always on. Gigabyte, on the other hand, has delivered on the very essence of what Max-Q was designed to offer, high strength gaming performance with amazing battery life. Results of five and over six hours in these two tests are usually reserved for true Ultrabooks, which don't come equipped with discrete GPUs, let alone one that would give most desktop cards a run for their money. The hits continue here for Gigabyte since the creative test doesn't really make use of the GPU, but once gaming is factored in, the Aero 15X's larger capacity and more efficient graphics card still allow it to lead by a significant amount. Now moving on to some temperatures, we have to remember that these are thin and light notebooks with limited cooling assemblies, but they are also packing GPU cores that are pulled from the desktop arena. That means that neither really runs cool, but it does look like Gigabyte manages to thermal load uh, just a little bit better, even though it doesn't have Asus's fancy push-up air intake assembly. I also noticed the Zephyrus GTX 1080 ended up hitting lower clock speeds more often than the GTX 1070 in the Aero 15X. This was likely due to temperatures, but it didn't really show up in any of our gaming results, since the 1080 has more than enough graphics horsepower to overcome slightly lower operating frequencies. Okay, so I think it's about time to wrap up my thoughts on the ROG Zephyrus from Asus and the Aero 15X from Gigabyte. 
Now, both of these notebooks are fantastic. Uh, the Zephyrus is just, it just blazes through gaming performance because uh, it's got the GTX 1080 and it's max good design and you've got 120 hertz IPS G-Sync display. So overall, you're gonna get a much smoother gaming play, gameplay experience in that ultra slim chassis. But the problem with the Zephyrus is the battery life and just the way how Asus has just designed the notebook in general. The keyboard is in an odd placement. You're definitely, it's ergonomically just not gonna work out that well if you decide to take it with you to school or just work in general. Uh, but I guess, you know, it's some of the downsides that you'll have to give when you decide to pay that premium uh, for a GTX 1080 inside this, that slim chassis. Now, switching gears to the Gigabyte Aero 15X, and I think this has won me over in a lot of ways. For one, the IO is pretty much loaded. It's got an SD card reader. I can definitely take advantage of that for events like Computex and CES. But most importantly, the, it's, it's a fully functioning laptop. The keyboard is right exactly where it needs to be. The trackpad is, well, out of the box, it doesn't come out that great. After updating to Windows position, it was just usable and it was great. It was a day and night difference. Uh, the gaming performance, while I'm not significantly looking forward to gaming on it that often, I think it should blaze really well through video editing and I'm really looking forward to using that uh, throughout my trips uh, in the upcoming future. But you know, what's even interesting is the display on the Gigabyte. I just prefer having bezel-less screens. It's just hard to go back to a notebook with thicker bezels like the Zephyrus because, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, I would prefer the Gigabyte Aero 15X over the Zephyrus any time of the day. And the design is also a lot simpler on the Aero 15X uh, compared to the Zephyrus. Lastly, the battery life. The Aero 15X destroys the Zephyrus. It's just a lot better than the Asus notebook. So if you're looking for a Max-Q notebook with the best possible battery life, Pick the Gigabyte Aero 15X. It's just a much better option uh, compared to the Zephyrus. And obviously it's also a lot more cheaper than the Zephyrus as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Gigabyte Aero 15X and the ROG Zephyrus from Asus. What do you guys think about the design and the performance that it brings to the table? But most importantly, which one would you pick and why? Now, don't start commenting on, you can build a gaming desktop PC, but I just wanted to put that out there. Which of these two notebooks would you pick? Or are there any alternatives that uh, you might want us to take a look at that feature this new Max-Q architecture? Again, let us know in the comments down below. I'm Ebra with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Stay subscribed for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.